Hello, today another modern tech fail. This is my little mixer table. It's part of my uh, oscilloscope music setup. That's on the right side and does the horizontal, that does the vertical. Isn't it fun to see what happens when you talk? This is a Behringer Eurorack UB1202. Quite nice, lots of inputs and outputs in a very small form factor for very, very little money. And it has failed, so uh, warning, this is just you no know, low cost commercial stuff, I think it's probably worse. It's probably 50 bucks and it's ultra low noise. And it's probably the noisiest mixer I ever had. Now it's really, really noisy. And as you can tell from the, the hum, it uh, sounds like 60 hertz hum. So my bet goes to a uh, zapped filtering capacitor somewhere, maybe in the power supply, maybe in here. And since I expect this to be a very boring recapping exercise, I thought I should make it more challenging and interesting. So I brought my COVID mask and I'm going to do this repair blindfolded. Is it just a transformer or is it a power supply? Output. 2 times 18 volt alternative. Oh, so that's probably normal. So they just put the transformer on the outside and the caps or the power supply is on the inside. There we go. Alright. Mm -hmm. It's going to be pretty annoying if we have to remove all the knobs. Yay. Okay. It's a pretty neat board and actually made for very quick assembly with all the stuff going together but the amps are right here this uses the same amps everywhere and power supply is over here so after removing the heat sink we can see that those are two 78 15 regulators so 15 volt regulators and it's pretty easy to see what the problem is and that's the plus 15 volts which is at 15 volts and has already some trouble. But wait until you see the minus 15 volts. And that one has some real trouble here. So I, I, I bet both my, uh, no, all the caps are, must be completely dried. You can also see on the back the source of the problem, right? This is, all discolored and that's probably from the heat sink or the diodes themselves so it's another overheated capacitors that killed them okay i don't see leaking on the caps themselves. Uh, this one's good. 100 microfarads. Three hundred milliohms. Oh, that's a good one. So that's not our problem. It's 300 milliohms. 90 microfarads. Those are good caps. Not those two. Next one. 
What are those? 47 microfarads, 100 volts, so they are generously sized. 47, that one, that's the one. 132 nanofarads, so that's the one, the, the dead one. And this one is the same one. And that one is dead too, probably, uh, yeah. One kilo ohm resistor and in the nanofarad range. Okay, so those two guys are dead. And I still have two more filtering. I think all the other ones are decoupling. And one. So, 300 microfarad. Nope, dried out, 170 nanofarads. So those were actually 85 degrees rated, they are just the basement category. But this one has a little bit of capacitance remaining, 56 and 10 ohms, so it's half dead. And the next one is also 3 nanofarads, it should be 47 microfarad. It's the brand Zunda, don't buy your cap from Zunda. So this is just the modern capacitor plague thing. The the one that make people say all you have to do to repair stuff is recap them. And I have replaced all my capacitors. They were all bad. Uh, actually not all, there are two that were good, but you no, know, all the 47 microfarads in particular subject to no stress whatsoever, just decoupling. They ran from a third gone to you no know, a few nanofarads completely gone. And curiously, the only two good ones were the input uh, capacitor that subject to the most stress, the 100 volts, 100 microfarads. I still replace them because they are, of course, guilty by association, but measurement tells me those are just perfectly good. Uh, so two good caps that are still got replaced and, you know, maybe 70 bad caps. They just got bad on their own. There is, there is no reason for them to get bad in such a short amount of time with such mild condition of usage except faulty manufacturing. Which brings us to an interesting topic. Can you tell uh, from looking at a cap if it's bad? Well, sometimes you can. Um, if it leaks, you'll find something on uh, the PCB. Uh, if they have this little cross thing on the side, uh, sometimes they'll puff up uh, and that would be a sign that it would be bad. But this is China's uh, finest. Um, so all those three caps are representative of what I found. They are all bad and there is absolutely no way to tell from the outside. And no same for this one. It looks absolutely perfect. It doesn't have the telltale dome. There is no sign of leaking at all. So let's, let's see how they test. Um, so we'll first put a new one. That's the Japanese capacitor I replaced them with. Rated 105 degrees, uh, 10,000 hours, and you know, out of the box, new 42 microfarads, and the ESR is one uh, 1.3 ohms. So good Japanese cap. We try one of the Chinese caps, and that one is. 32.6 microfarads, so that's one of the better ones, so it's already bound by no, no, a, a, not quite a third, a quarter. And the ESR is up to 3.27 ohms. And that one is 7.59 microfarads, so it's further down. And you see that the ESR is 4.2 ohms, so you, usually you can correlate uh, how high the, um, the, the, the capacitance uh, decrease with the ESR increase. And that is another one. So they are all 47 microfarads, right? And this one is now 1.4 nanofarads, so it's completely dried out. 
and the ESR is 24 ohms. So there's really no way to tell unless you measure them and that's our big guy that looks absolutely perfect. Uh, no signs of leaking. And that one was in the power supply so it's completely dried out. So 88 nanofarad and no 700 ohms so completely dried out this one was subject to a high temperature and so those are the type of capacitors you never want to put anywhere i mean you shouldn't even buy them they are oh no actually i was going they are 85 degrees rated this was an exception they put 105 degree c uh, so they knew it was going to be a little hotter in the power supply uh, but never buy any of these and uh, this is an 85 degree uh, centigrade. There is no reason to put this in any circuit whatsoever. There's a huge difference between the 105 rated at uh, 10,000 hours and a, an 85 degree rated at 1,000 hours. Uh, not only from the difference between 1 and 10,000 hours, but the temperature acceleration factor is exponential. It's 1 over kT. Uh, no, just on the lifetime, there's a difference of uh, 10 between the two. Uh, and then on the temperature should account for another factor of 10 at least. So there's probably over a factor of 100 difference in, in lifetime between those two capacitors by you know, having spent you know, 10 cents more on the Japanese capacitor. But if you can't tell from the outside, could you tell from how they look inside? You bet you can. Here's some footage from a previous video where I opened up a good and a bad one. You see, electrolyte caps are made of two microstructure sheets of thinly oxidized aluminum rolled together in a gel electrolyte. If the electrolyte dries up, either from a poorly sealed cap, a faulty formulation or too high a temperature, then the cap is a cap no more. And here you can see a bad one, completely burned out uh, on the left, and a good one, uh, you no know, same value on the right, uh, that's healthy and has its electrolyte. And it's of course a load of fun to unroll them like toilet paper and separate the two electrode sheets. Here you can see the healthy gel electrolyte that's in between the two sheets. In comparison, the dried up one, this one clearly overheated, looks like parchment paper. It's completely dried up. Okay, my oscilloscope music demo works again. Okay, it works much better. I had lost some, uh, some of the definition actually with all those bad caps. So now it's much sharper. You can see the music. So, uh, what have we learned? Well, well, not much that, uh, no, don't buy Chinese caps uh, and don't fool yourself into thinking that if you uh, replace, you know, if you revive some piece of uh, modern equipment by recapping, uh, it means that A, every piece of equipment will be revised by recapping and B, is that, you no, know, you have learned something about electronics. Uh, this is just a modern aberration. We, we've learned nothing except that we shouldn't buy bad, uh, cheap Chinese capacitors. In the meantime, enjoy the beautiful oscilloscope music. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.